Hello world, my name is Tim Russwick and I'm with Rick Davidson. Rick, what's hey. going on, dude? Ah, uh, excited to talk to you, Tim. Oh, and we're trying to get it started before oh, this game's audio. We tried it's so quick. We're going to be talking about what makes it work, and we're playing Ape Out by Ape Gabe Cusillo. So if you can hear a rumbling, that's not our microphones. We've just spent the last five minutes trying to track down why our microphones are broken. It's the game. It's not me. It's, it's the rumbly of the gorilla that we're going to... The gonna... first thing I love here, Tim, just first of all, and I haven't seen this game at all know nothing about it me either. i love the i love the shimmering it's so easy like technically it's easy just to probably have uh i don't know assets in there two or three different assets or maybe there's some sort of programmatic wobbling of it uh, immediately there's motion and movement and it looks a little bit like an old school film projector if you know well, what i mean people say things like oh you can't make a unique indie game in 2020 but look look you could just do something like this right this is aesthetically distinct and that just makes you stand out. It doesn't really matter what we're gonna find out, what kind of game this is. I've never played it, I don't know, but I've seen this game a thousand times in a thousand places, uh, and I wanna find out what... Uh, so what one of. of the things, what makes it work, if you're sitting out there at home, you're saying, how do I make my game work? The very first, like within 10 seconds, you and I are looking at this and going, oh, that's a bit different. That's how you make it work. That's you how can't you confuse it with something. another game. There's no way. You right, can't say right. yeah. that game with the crazy orange gorilla. You can't be like, oh, that was Skyrim, right? Like this. Yeah. It's, I would it's like good. to point out that before we got to this screen, there was a loading screen that did not have any loading indicator progress on it. And that's super frustrating. And it froze so my computer that. and I had to restart. <laughs> but we're going to talk about what makes it work, not yes. what makes it freeze up your computer. Exactly. So should okay. I, should I, should I yeah, join? Yeah, let's play it. Let's do it. Yeah, play All it. All right. Go. I don't know I'm assuming this, mate. Look at that. That's so cool. That's just switching between what maybe five different images just tr 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 makes it look like it's all swirly yeah. and animated. It and it still feels like all part of the same thing. It still feels artistically coherent. Like, and there's no still no damn loading progress bar. That looks cool. That looks old, like an old '70s Western movie. Yeah. I yeah. like it. You don't have to draw your inspiration from all the other games out there draw your inspiration from uh movies or from books that was cool i like that this is hey. cool. i'm gonna like this i feel like i just run around and smash people oh it's totally like a like an old old movie yeah with the credits rolling out and you're playing at the moment right yeah i'm playing i'm smashing oh, yeah, people cool. You know so, what I noticed is these shadows right here. Um, Father Phobia actually uses a similar system for uh, 2D shadows, but it makes it seem 3D. It's a 2D game. I, I think it's 2D. 2D. Really? I don't know. It, really? I think it's 2D with the 3D shadows. I could be wrong about that. Mm, we'll see it's so any... distinct, though. Like, you can't... Look at, look at this. I think I just... Okay, I died. I'm oh, not very good at video games. Okay, that's cool, man. Oh, and did it just show you the whole level? That's in a quick way. I restarted. Oh, this is very hotline. Rick, man. Rick, maybe, maybe we should have had some preparation here. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it did show me the whole level, and it says dead, but now I kind of know where I need to get to, which is Let's cool. Let's look at this screen for a moment. That's showing you goal and feedback and progress all at the one time without any... And you know, if you've watched our videos, I am a fan of treating gamers like they're clever and like they've played a game or two before. It's not saying your progress. It's not saying 15%. It's just... Oh, that's a level. Right. Oh, and that's how far I got. Oh, and I suck. <laughs> and it lets me like, know. But you know what else is so cool about this too? Is like not not every player would enjoy something like this. And it's really fast. If I just click, it goes away. Wow. And there we go. And yeah. I'm back to this. And if I die... Come on, guys. Come on. And then it's just so quick. I click and I skip that. But then yeah. I click again and I'm back in the game. Instantly. Back in the, like, yeah, there's boom. none of this like load and hey, well done. And that's clever setup. The player, right. if it's a quick game that you're supposed to fail a lot, then like back to again, back again, back again. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make you wait. I like that. Bro, I love how it just jumps into the action. It makes you want to really like run at people. The guy, what, the... what sort of graphics have we got? Like, is that, you're saying 2D. Is that a 3D model just with some weird shading? 
Oh, I've only just realized it's an ape. God, I'm an idiot. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's called it's ape. An ape. So I, I called I didn't, orange I'm like, weird person out. It's, it's a blob. Yeah, why is that person <laughs> running weird? Oh, yeah, it's an ape. Okay, okay, okay. I feel, I feel like we're figuring that out. <laughs> You're just, only five minutes into You it. get to play. I think you're escaping from some kind of scientific experiment or something, and you're just really mad at the scientists. It doesn't really matter at this point. I just know I run at people and I smash them into the wall, and I'm having fun. Like, if, if you think you need all kinds of crazy setup and story, and lore, uh, look, I'm having fun just with just an orange running. blob running it, towards it the science with your guns. It's, what's just, are you using WASD to move? I'm, and I'm then using WASD and then I'm using the mouse to aim. And I like, yeah. I, love, I, I really love that. I didn't know that. There's no gun, it's just, just smashing. Oh, and it shows you where you ran. Yeah, it shows you like the, cool. the path you take. That's really yeah. cool. That's a Again, nice these little are, detail. These are little features because it's from a genre perspective, it's a top down shooter right well it's you're kind of not shooting at the moment you're just punching but it's a it's a Aping. got a little bit of a little bit of that stealth aspect in there what what genre would you call this i'm struggling for the right name well i think that's what makes it cool when, when you can't say it's a it's a platformer exactly you yeah know? what's uh, hotline miami down, sure. what's what's that genre like the the smash the I don't know, top down shooter. T twin I think stick top down shooter. shooter this maybe no way, this is a, a good like yeah. I don't know. It's a good like change up of the genre. Like I don't feel yeah. like I've made games like this where I aim with the mouse and I move with WASD. I've made a ton of these, but this yeah. doesn't feel generic. One, because aesthetically it's distinct, but two, like they made pretty much a top down shooter without guns, right? Like I don't have any guns. Yeah. And that makes everything play differently. It makes you just and it's and not the same a, thing that everything else there's a everything reason else. for it the reason is it's not just re yet another kind of you know renegade guy who's escaped from prison you're an ape that's the reason you don't have a gun of course right. an ape's not going to hold a gun look at it, it's huge he's just going to go smack and smack the guy into the wall and so the skill here is you trying to dodge and navigate away from being shot at right maybe, yeah. you, do, maybe you do get a gun later on and make me look like a fool but um I, you know, I love, cool. I mean, aesthetically, it's got this really cool, like, thing going on, right? But it's also, like, it's leaning into the premise of the game, which is the ape is out, right? Yeah. Ape out. And yes, I, yeah. I feel like an ape, I even notice with the movement controls, when I'm aiming forward and I go to the side, I'm slower. I'm also slower when I go backwards, but when I go forwards, I go faster. So that's it, what we see. Yeah, you see the ape in the zoo who runs at the glass and makes everyone go right. flying. Runs and it's out got away, this scared. interesting yeah. like feel to it. Like at first I thought it felt clunky, but it, it feels, I feel like an ape, which is good. <laughs> like it's, it's got this good feeling to it. Like I feel, and the animation really seems to really convey what I'm doing. I love so the, cool. the title sequence I love too. The type, yeah. So I want to talk about the aesthetics a little bit because this is really, you know, to me this is so awesome and right on my mind. That is, what is it? Uh, having a comic book feel, or is it having an old movie feel, or is it? It's a got bit a little bit things? of both, but I feel like it's got a, a unique thing to it. Like for example, this game with like generic programmer art and kind of kind of deal would mm -hmm. not be anywhere near as amusing as with this whole like aesthetic style right like this really yeah. adds a lot to the game but if you look at it from the point of view of, like i'm always inspired where i see an art style that i think i might be able to do that because there's a there's a technique as opposed to a right. a, a craftsmanship in like the the ape is pretty cool but you whoa what's that you can grab a guy i can grab that's him. awesome that's so cool. <laughs> there's a friend killed him that's great so yeah uh so you can uh you can get a, an ape model and then because of the the shader that's used on this, it's just solid with a little bit of what around the edges, a little bit of fuzz around the edges, which I think is really cool. But the solidness, that's that's not super tough. You can do that in your 3D program. You can go and make an ape look okay, but then just cover up your imperfections by having it as a solid color. That's right. great, but it doesn't look like that's what they've tried to do. It looks like a style. Well, and, and, and I think the mistake a lot of people make is they try to make, like, they think that good art equals triple A art, right? They think they need that realistic look, when in, in actuality, it's not so much good or bad, it's like, is it distinct or not? Is it 
aesthetically pleasing or not, right? Like you can make a game with squares and cubes and stuff if you know your colors and you understand your relationship between things and you, all these little cool aesthetic details. Like even the, the tutorial, right? It told me to right click and it's yeah. kind of in oh. the game uh, mm. aesthetically, which is nice. And then this camera angle with the, whether it's 3D or 2D, it kind of feels like it's 2D with that really, sorry, 3D with the camera super high up and, and all of the world geometry is, is it 2D or 3D? How's the camera not going I, over the I'm top pretty sure, okay, Phytophobia happens to have this mechanic and the way okay. that this shadow blocks this, I'm pretty okay. sure it's the exact same how do, you, a 2D how do you create effect. that though what's the technique it there's a lot of math that? involved <laughs> it's okay. uh but i i've did some research on this i'm i could be wrong about this this could be 3d i don't know this looks 2d to me though and that and that would be really impressive if it's a 2d game it right. could be yeah if it's this is cool if you take your 2d uh wisdom and look at it that way if i was to do this 3d i would say that the camera is lower than the top of these objects. So the camera collision, the, the camera is actually, I don't know if you can see my hands over here, but say here's the wall and the character's down here. The camera is not all the way above it. So the camera is still staying within the geometry of the objects. And that's why we're not seeing over the top of the blocks. Cause if you saw that the camera would get blocked right. the whole time. So it's just literally a directly top down with the colliders of the geometry, keeping the camera where it's supposed to be. So I, I think it, the fact that we're even having this conversation, I think, is a is a plus to the game. Like it, it's yeah. cool to have an aesthetic style where people aren't really sure how you pulled it off. I think that's cool. Mm. So, so UX wise, I love the way this that this happens. Is like this yeah. is where I learn to grab people, right? And it's got right click. Yeah. And then a lot of the people that I encounter are set up for that experience, mm. and it's it's ready to give me something cool happen to happen right with well, that hit the right that click. moment was a classic mario moment wasn't it where you it, it says here's a thing to do and then you immediately have the ability to do it there's nothing right. else you could have done in that instance the guy was right there all you're going to do is grab him so that's right. a clever way of introducing a new thing tell them and then get them to do it straight away and i've noticed several other par people in this level too they're kind of like they want you to do that they want you to test yeah. that out and try <laughs> the, it the people in the level want you to smash them like that <laughs> well they're probably upset now because they i like the hurt. power of just smashing through those like, yeah it feels it really is on theme i think why these guys with the bluish outfit what are they all about they, they got a shotgun it looks like okay. oh they're, they're scary to... i don't like yeah. them So from a design point of view, it really passes the first 10 minute test. You play for 10 minutes, you're like, man, this is so cool. For sure. And then the what makes it work the question to go to next is, why would you play this for two hours? You know, you, we know now why you'd play it for 10 minutes. It feels good, it looks good. There's not, like, it's not a crazy different. They're not reinventing the way video games are played, but taking a genre, done a couple of tweaks to it that makes it feel really different. But what do we need to see over time to have it? Well, look at the succession of like enemy types that I've seen, right? Because now I just have this guy that explodes, right? This is the third enemy type I've learned about. So th they're they're kind of they're teaching me the mechanics, but they're also kind of onboarding me and teaching me one thing at a time, which is really really nice. And I kind of get to learn the, the tools that I have available. See now all three of them are right here, right? And now I got to kind of yeah. work harder to to just get the same distance. And then and when this you, shows me that I was so close. That makes yeah. me want to keep playing. And when you die, do you go back to the start of this level or, or start of everything again? Is it? I think I started section of... two, which is like the okay. middle part of this. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, two heating up. Heating up. That's I'm good. Also, I, I'm a fan I mean, of checkpoints. I'm a, I'm a fan of games that... Oh, okay, on these guys. Where is he? Uh, I, I like games that allow us to make the story. So there was no introduction where there's a mad scientist saying, I've accidentally right. gone and created an ape that's crazy. You know, everyone run. We often think that story needs cutscenes and it needs backstory and names of people and characters, but the character is the ape. We've got the baddies that the ape doesn't like. There's some sort of facility. Like we're building the story just by the, the visual. It's the, the right. old classic, show them, don't tell them. Well, I think I really there's like there's that. a lot of story here though too, and so it's like you're an ape, right? You started out in a cage, and you got all yep. these guys with these white uniforms and guns that are trying to shoot at you. So like, Whoa. there's some yep. subtle stuff there 
that is is being told. There's a lot of like environmental storytelling and like the way that the art assets are using and stuff like that. Um, but I agree with you. I like when you can create your own kind of story, and I think it's more interesting that way. Like that was the first thing I said. Like, oh, these people probably experimented on me, and now I gotta. They deserve it, right? And it's yeah. yeah. Whereas if it was so if they made up the story and it was something I didn't necessarily like. Maybe I wouldn't have resonated with the game as much, but the fact that yeah, I can make up you my can, own. <laughs> you're filling in the blanks, aren't you? Right. Like for me, I might look at it and go, "Oh, the you know, the ape is a, some sort of genetic modification." You might look at it and say it's an ape right. from the wild that that wants to get back home to where it needs to go. But either way, we're consistent in ape is the goodie that's been held against its will, and these these baddies with the guns that are trying to get us are our enemy. So. Yeah, it's cool. I like these little sections in between levels too. It's kind of like a chill. Okay, nobody's yeah. trying to shoot me. Nobody's trying to kill me. And these yeah. also act as checkpoints, I believe too. It's like section two and section three. Um, and do you have any? Do you have any kind of health indicator? Like you seem to have been getting shot a couple of times before you die. But yeah, how do we know that's that? Interesting. There's no UI at all. There's nothing other than this indicator right here of where my mouse is. Uh, there's there's no health. I, I don't really know. But at the same time, like. It doesn't seem like I care about that. Like that's not what yeah. the game is about, you know. Like it's not about health management. It's more about just running out dudes and smashing them into pieces. Splat. Splat. The nice blood. I honestly think like a health bar or something would slow this game down, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not you don't need it. I, there's, well, it fits in with the what we're trying to give to the player, which is, hey player, you figure it out. Right. We, we haven't told you who you are or why you're here. And if we went and showed you your health, then you would have the answer already. You wouldn't feel as smart figuring it out. But here, you're like, ooh, grab. Oh, oh, I guess so. He's so strong. I gotta keep, like, cool. smashing it. Okay, well, this is the answer to how do we keep the player interested in hour two. Just, just that, it's... Yeah. The There's enough mechanic. interesting stuff that keeps happening. It happens at a rate that makes you want to continue, right? Like, yep. it's very... It, these are simple mechanics. So if you just kept putting me in rooms with the same guy over and over again and they were the same thing, I'd probably get bored. But, like, this game is doing a really good job of, like, oh, you you, you mastered that? Okay, well, try this, try this, try this. What's our pacing? We could go back and watch our video and calculate it exactly, but it feels like it's every five minutes there's a new thing. Just anyone out there who's saying, but how often do you do it? Five minutes of gameplay gives you a new sneak from behind the guy, pull the lever thing, those little doorways you can go into, the doorways that you can smash. Maybe maybe it's a little bit sooner than that. It's been every three to five minutes. I would say we're about 17 minutes in the video and uh, we, we've probably seen five or six of them. Five so. or six, yeah. Well, let's, let's see. That was one. Let's just measure how long it takes to get to the next one. Uh, and then explosions. There's probably been dozen of these things that we haven't quite noticed because we haven't really we haven't stopped and looked at them but you know what i'm noticing too is as i go forward i seem to be gaining momentum as well like the game is encouraging me to just run around like a crazy ape it yes. doesn't want me to constantly stop and wander around corners and stuff it just wants me to just keep running it's rewarding you for being courageous right going okay and then that feature they just showed us they've given it to us a second time after about two minutes that felt good if you it's like here's a new thing and then you do it seven times in a row then you, you know you get bored of it I can oh and you can carry me. it as a shield maybe oh let's try that That's that better combining, work combining the mechanics there we that go awesome. okay. and i can throw I would, it at them yeah. i would call this that's the new thing that why does this game work that's a brilliant moment well done to the developers they showed you a thing you can do grab the guy then a few minutes later they showed you a thing you can do bust the door off and then a minute later they showed you a way that you could bust the door off and use it as a shield therefore combining the two things and giving it meaning to it and if they introduce another mechanic later on where you can grab it hold it and do something else with it then it's layering mechanics on right. top of each other and you're not feeling like i learned the thing i can do the thing ho hum okay, well, you know what's so cool really about that smart. too is, is i felt like i did that i didn't feel like the designer did that i felt like yeah. i figured that out i'm smart yeah, you did figure that out Tim. Well <laughs> it was all me. you're so clever tim <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's that's what good design is though it's making the player feel smart and feel smart feel yes interested don't tell them all the answers to it let people figure it out 
That's a mistake. We're stop making games, games for someone's grandmother. I'm just, oh, mobile games. Ah, don't get me <laughs> oh, started. He's good. He's good. Oh, he's good. Oh, oh, he's here. That's another thing. Visual feedback, visual and auditory feedback. Like the yeah. beeps. Like, I can't really get that confused. Like, I don't think he's gonna get on a surfboard or like teleport yeah. out of here, right? Like, beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah, maybe he's, I, he's gonna explode. In the microwave. <laughs> why, why is he putting 15 minutes into the microwave? Yeah, it leans on existing knowledge, and game dev this is called affordances, which allow me to take my existing knowledge of, well, bombs sound like that, they go beep, 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 and then they explode, and you don't have to tell me that, because I've learned that from movies and TV and other things my entire life. Yeah. Uh, and then they put them in the game, it makes something really easy to understand. Oh, oh okay. okay, another new feature. Yeah. Oh, and different guys. That was after about two minutes, I reckon. The pacing is great. If you've got the content to support it, Sometimes you've only got a couple of features, you can't have a new feature for two minutes, but that was just The pacing is fantastic. Lights. I'm very into this game. Yeah. This game has, like, slowly given me little pieces. Like, we were talking before we started video about how I like depth, but I hate complexity. And yeah. I think that's a mistake a lot of games make, is they start too complex. Yeah. This game gave me one button, run at them with an ape, and smash them. And now I feel like I'm actually, like I've got a whole tool set and I've got an understanding of the mechanics and the movement. Oh. I, I don't know why exactly I'm smashing what everybody. But... Oh, end of side A. Oh, okay, we're getting clues on on kind of the Little pieces. inspiration for... Is it Are we going to see a cutscene? Or no, I, 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 I feel like, like cutscene like would be off-brand for this game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it really we, is. I think it's, it's... It's like an old, yeah, an old record, a record from the 70s. You just flipped it from side A to side B. Right, or like one of those Anyone who's tapes. never seen a record is under the age of, like, 20. <laughs> it's like, a record? What are they? Flip them? What do you mean? Oh, the elevator came up. That was cool. I you like know what's that. cool as well? Just from a... I'm looking at this with my production hat on, is the transition we made before, the flashing lights came on. That's cheap to develop, just, you know, a bit of flashing lights. Then they just switched the color of the ground right. now from I'm whatever white. to red, and the color of the guys from white to black, and, or whatever color they were, you know, the blue top guy. It's, it's exactly the same, but it feels so different because of that holistic color change. That's a really cheap way to get depth out of your game and create variety. I think I can do something like, with that. You grab that thing. Oh, that was what we were talking about before, the, the grab it, hold it, walk with it. Oh, I'm going to so kill cool. a generator. And look how strong they're making you feel. It's like, really. See, yeah. I the, the pacing in this game is fantastic. Yeah. Ooh, oh, and like, look, now they got flashlights. Oh, flashlights. Oh, yeah. And this the, is, fuzzy, this is the fuzzy shading around it as well. I mean, so, you know, if you're watching this, if you're working on a game, don't just make your cone of light like everyone else's cone of light where it solidly lights the world. They've gone and made a fuzziness to it. It's reflecting off the walls and there's a distortion. Beautiful. Well, and this is just, okay, like everything we experienced so far, not only have fantastic pacing, beautiful aesthetic, but like the main thing that I love about this game, the main thing is I'm going to come away from this, right? And every time I talk about this, there's no way that I could ever possibly confuse this with another game, mm. right? Like I play a lot of indie games that unfortunately are forgettable and they're, they yeah. come off as generic because they don't put in details. And it's not even just aesthetic details, but aesthetic is a huge part of that, right? This game is mm -hmm. so distinct. It doesn't even have to be crazy, unique and groundbreaking mechanics, right? It's just distinct. You can't forget it. This is very memorable <laughs> for me. Yeah, the word I'm, I always bang on about is remarkable. This Rem is re exactly remarkable because you want to turn to your friend and say, check this out. Why is it remarkable? Oh, because you're an ape, not a guy, and you're powerful and you smash guys. <laughs> That's remarkable. Just the, if you have a video, if you're out there trying to promote this game and market this game and someone sees the 10 second video, they'll be like, that's different. That's remarkable. That's unusual. That's right. interesting. Yeah. It's so if I was, sorry, Tim, I was going to say, if I was to go about developing this sort of game to make it remarkable, I'd start with, I'm a gameplay guy. So I would start with my mechanic. I'm like, you know what would be cool? It'd be an ape. I've got this idea, an ape. So prototype an ape running around and smashing stuff and just only focus on that don't focus on how it looks don't focus on sound effects nothing else just running around smashing dudes in a in a gray box kind of place until it feels good to run around and do that the next i'd say cool i had this idea to have a different sort of camera 
okay, let's play around with the camera, get that feeling good. And then after I've done those couple of things, I would then start to play around with visuals. Okay, how can we make it look good? And that's how I would layer these innovations or these iterations on top of each other. But I like to start with the gameplay moment. And if you can't get this ape running around feeling awesome, don't ship your game. Don't don't try to launch your game. Don't try to finish your game. You've got to get that just feel of it feeling really good. That's my right. belief on on what what everything builds from. That's just my style. You Someone else might good, start with a really visuals. good point though too. Is like these mechanics match the theme really really well, right? Mm. Like I, I feel like an ape. Right. Yeah. I don't know what came first, the mechanic or the theme. That's a chicken and egg problem, right? Chicken or the but egg, like, yeah. I, I feel like an ape, right? If you were to, mm. if I were to be like a dog or something, running and pushing people into the wall would not feel right, right? Yeah, but an ape, yeah. I'm like, oh, I've seen that in plenty of movies. I like to run at people and push them in the walls. That feels like something a, a ape would do. So there's also, I think there's also a way to research who should your character be? Like, how can you stumble across? Because I can't remember another game where you control an ape. And it's like, why not? It's uh, now, you, now you see it, it's like, oh, it's obvious. This is really yeah. cool. You, why has no one done this before? Part of it is is because people just think it has to be a, a dude. I have to have a dude running around. Or maybe it's a lady to make it different. Or maybe it's a robot. Those are things that have been done before. How would you discover this? read comic books, watch videos, watch movies. And if you're watching a movie, say, and the character is an ape, and there's a powerful moment to it, just pay attention and say, how would that work in the video game? You watch a YouTube video where, I don't know, where the elephants chase the safari trucks, and the people on the safari trucks are like, holy crap, you know, get it in reverse, because the elephant or the, or the uh, rhinoceros or the hippopotamus is swimming in the water. Those are ways that you can take that moment of inspiration and be like, there's so much emotion in that moment of the guy on his boat trying to get away from the hippopotamus that's swimming after him. Maybe there's something in that for a video game character. But that's fantastic too games. though because you can get inspiration outside of games right you can get it from movies and books and life experiences and travel and all kinds of stuff uh mm. and i think some of the best games come from like this i can totally see this game coming from what would it feel like to play as an ape trying to escape some uh, jail cell yep. or something right like this is fantastic whereas like if you said i want to make a top-down platformer or top-down shooter right what mm -hmm. you might come up with is completely different. Yeah. Like, I, I remember uh, listening to a podcast by the creators of FTL, and they said that how they came up with FTL was they wanted to make you feel like you were Captain Kirk sitting in charge of the starship. Turn on the shields, mm. divert energy to, you know, the, the, the weapons, stuff like that. And that's how that game makes you feel. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So that could be the way the way that you start your game. You're sitting there, you're like, well, I've tried this game and that game. I, I want to work on a game. I, I want to work on the game, the game that I'm proud of and that I launch. Oh, wow, that's cool. That's cool and different. Whoa, and the lights changed. And then again. I died. And then you died. Why Rick, I forgot we were making a video for like two minutes. I was really yeah, into it. Into it. That's, that's a good sign. That's, that's a good sign. I was uh, out, yeah. But if you get there and say, okay, I, I'm going to think about my character. Just start with with genre and character. It's a top-down thing. And just look at everything. Write down a list of a hundred different characters. The character could be a molecule. The character could be a boat. The character could be, you know, a leaf, a cat, a dog, whatever. Write as many things down. Go crazy, go extreme. Maybe the character is a color. The character is a, you know, is a light bulb. Until you get to the point where something feels like that, hang on, that's interesting. If the character is a light bulb, then what would I do? They'd be very, they'd be made of glass, they'd be fragile, they can blind people, you know, they'd be very bright, you can dim them. Huh, there might be a game in that. I think that's the, the creative process is narrow it down to one thing. For example, who is my character? What is my character? And then expand it to a massive list of I'm going to brainstorm everything I can think of until something pops out that it could be remarkable and interesting. Then go and prototype it to see if you can get the feel of being amazing. And then you've got a game. Then you've got a game. I think that's fantastic. One last thing, one last insight that I think I've learned that I want to share and then we'll kind of summarize. Yeah. Um, I've noticed the more I play this game, the less I'm trying to kill people and yeah. the more I'm just trying to go. Mm. And I, I feel, I don't know what the story is exactly, but I feel like in my story, that's what's supposed to happen. I don't yeah. really care about killing the people. I just don't want them to shoot me, right? And I feel like that's an evolution of mechanics on top of story, on top of theme. 
uh, and it's it's kind of an evolution of gameplay on top of that. And it's just I think it's really that, really engaging. That could be if the if the, the developer is doing play testing, which you should always do, and watching people, they're like, you know what? After a while, people just don't bother killing anymore because the the thrill of the smash has worn off. Let's build that into the game, and that's why they introduce that stealth element of the flashlights where. It does say try to run around these guys so they're embracing right. the fact that you get a little bit fatigued with that core mechanic and they're saying well let's reward you for not doing that that i think that's a smart way to design that in so people don't get fatigued i think this game is fantastically designed so in summary rick what mm -hmm. makes it work makes it work is a really lovely game feel i wasn't playing it but you telling us it's awesome <laughs> the game feel of moving the it apes. looks like it feels good which is it good like it too. feels good the, the beautiful pacing of it makes it work. The fact that it all thematically connects together. You're powerful, you're an ape, you're trying to bust out, uh, The you know, you're against the baddies. I really like that it allows you to make up the story yourself rather than telling you here is the story. Um, and that there's variation without having to create a lot of production scope. So just changing the colors, just adding flashlights, uh, just adding one door mechanic. So there's a lot of easy production wins that allow the player to get another 10 minutes of gameplay, 20 minutes of gameplay. What, I have, what have I missed? What else Everything you said, I, I would say the, the the pacing really, really, really is on point. The, the, the lack of complexity in the beginning, the, the super easy way to pick it up. Like, it's just so simple to pick up. You just click one button and you smash a dude and then it slowly builds on top of that and it it does it so perfectly. Like, right when I'm like, okay, I've smashed enough dudes, then it's like, oh, well, you can hold dudes, right? Mm. It's just, it's yeah. like, it's, it's on point. And I think uh, a lot of games miss the mark on that and as a result, they lose players. But I agree. Uh, yeah. This video, I, I'm, I'm happy with the game and I think... Good I choice. think we summarize what makes it work. Yeah, excellent. So as always, thanks you guys for watching the video. And if you want to see Tim and I do more of these style game design, game development, marketing kind of reviews, then let us know. Maybe even let us know what game you'd like us to have a look at. So. Yeah, make sure you leave a comment down below. Leave your suggestions. If you want to know what makes it work or what we think makes it work on any video, leave those down. And make sure if you're on my channel, make sure you check out Rick's channel. If you're on Rick's channel, stay over there because it's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I think and maybe be... check out Tim's channel as well. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, All right, great stuff. See you later. Catch you later.